Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics, and working on some more uh, of the Blackstone comic book. Uh, if you haven't uh, already checked it out, you can get it on Indie Planet. Uh, this is book two. Uh, they're coming out slow but sure, but I'm doing everything myself, so I gotta, you know, I gotta fit it into the day amongst all the other fun stuff. So, uh, what I wanted to address, I had some people ask me on the, uh, you know, the comments below. Um, how they're having problems uh you know one particular said and forgive me if i don't do the shout out to the uh, the name there but uh one in particular said they're having problems shading uh comic book style muscles or doing shading for the artwork and then i've had multiple comments uh and questions about inking so i'm going to kind of address a few things here uh, uh once again uh if you've saw some of my other videos i'm using manga studio to uh to draw. I use a Wacom Cintiq which I'm drawing on now. I also use an Intuos 5 which is a smaller tablet uh, that you can set on your lap and you look up at the screen and draw on the tablet down on your lap which uh, there's actually pros and cons to both folks so check them out. Don't think that you gotta buy the big uh, bad you know machine uh, the Cintiq right away because I, I definitely didn't buy it right away. I worked up to it so at any rate um, what I want to address is uh, I'll, I'll talk to you about a few shortcut commands within uh, Manga Studio for making your inking workflow faster if this is a software that you're using. And then I'll also sh explain what I'm thinking as I shade some of this stuff. Like right here you can see that I just added some lines below the neck, uh, a little bit of black from the, the jawbone and the ear because uh, I just perceived that there would be a shadow there from those objects, probably even larger than this. But I slowly work up my shadows. I'm not a very overly uh, you know I don't drop in a lot of blacks to my artwork so you know I kinda work up to that real nice and easy uh, so you know try your own style you know do a couple where you flood it with lots of blacks and leave less white and do some where you do more shading more cross hatching and you gotta find what's comfortable for you and what you think looks, looks nice you know at the end of the day it's your your book your artwork so you gotta be happy with it uh, obviously if it doesn't make other people happy then it won't sell so I guess you gotta take that into account also alright so uh, some of the shortcut commands that I like spacebar will give you the hand moves your art, artwork around real nice and easy uh, P brings you back to pen uh, first it goes to pencil so I'll hit it again for pen because I'm inking right now and X will flip your colors back so say I want to add some nice line work in white in here I can easily flip back and forth by hitting the X to black and white spacebar again to move down and another thing that I like a lot about Manga Studio and this also relates back to the how people said they were having trouble shading artwork uh, you see my pencils are very loose right here uh, bracket keys for sizing uh, your brush up and down so the whole time my right hands on the keyboard here I'm not having to go over here to my tools okay so the bracket keys are above the comma and quotation mark key and below the plus and mi minus sign on the keyboard generally uh, so at any rate you know what I will look at when I say do this leg here you can see I drew the pencils relatively loose because if I was to pan back what's my zoom I gotta reset that that's on like a weird key but uh, another thing I like about Manga Studio 5 it's got the interactive zoom so you pull back and wherever you pull forward you know you click hold down pull forward it's gonna zoom into that portion of the artwork you know, so I can zoom right in and, you know, get into these little details that I like to do when I'm inking my stuff. So, back over to here and zoom back in. Okay, so, and P for pen, and back to this. So, what I like to do is draw out the, you know, I'll draw out the leg here. Get, first, I'll do the outer line work. And try to make sure you're always doing thick to thin uh, when you do your line work around your shapes. It's a uh, little more interesting to look at. I think it'll it'll you know make your artwork stand out a little bit more than if you just went around it like this. See how boring that's looking, even though I'm doing it real fast. It looks very boring, very very basic and boring. So to really make this leg have some form, for one, this side is to the shadow, so there's gonna be a nice heavy line to the back of this part of the leg. Uh, I always kind of roll the lines in and segment around them. Uh, and then right here, say I've got the top portion of the uh, back of the leg there. Um, I'll make that a thinner line, but then as I come down to the bottom of it, I'll do a couple 
feathered strokes and make that line thicker. Then I'll start another line behind that and what that does is it, it really makes this muscle stand out. I usually throw in some of those little lines like that. So all those things are just to give the line weight and the feel of the artwork a little bit better than just a basic, you know, like if you were going around all this with the same line work, it looked like you inked all your work with microns. And since we're using uh, digital methods here, at least I am, and I don't know if you are, but possibly, um, you want to, you know, make it look like you're using a brush. So you want to think in terms of, you know, I'm using a crow quill on a brush to get this work done. And I do recommend using an actual crow quill on a brush so that you know what I'm talking about. There's a, a large uh, difference in feel. So you have to basically emulate that feel when you're doing uh, comics like this. And, you know, you want to you want to get it to where people can't tell you're working digitally, you know. Um, once you start hearing comments like that on your work, then you'll you'll know you're in the right direction. So, so anyways, uh, I just keep blocking this in and, you know, back to the shading part that people seem to struggle with. I always look at the leg. I got that calf pretty big. But anyway, I always look at the leg. First, I designate my light source, which I already know, you know, if you look up here at the bicep and the, the chest and everything, that's where my light is coming from in front of them. Maybe, you know, I guess what I picture is that these bars right here are going to light up. So maybe those are the light source casting on to our character. Uh, Krem, the villain, you know, obviously he's got somebody locked up in the chamber there, so he's, he's a bad guy. So what we'll do is we'll first designate the light source. Um, I always try to not trace the muscles all the way and, uh, and give them some variance in the way that the light is hitting portions of it. And I'll just draw that in real quick. I'm not saying this is the right way, but uh, so to me, what I just did there is I defined portions of the leg that would be in shadow. Making sure not to overly shadow it, because it's always easier to just add a little bit more, you know, versus, you know, overdoing it and having to erase a bunch or something, which either way digitally isn't very time consuming. But so what I'll do is I'll fill that in like that. Okay, and then sometimes I'll stop right there and I'll kind of test it. He's got kind of this He-Man looking thing going on right here. So let me fill some of that in. Of course, there's no relation, and I probably shouldn't even said the word He-Man in my video, but Blackstone is all copyright and property of our Marzullo Ram Studios .com, or just Ram Studios. It's actually my website's robertmarzullo.com, just in case you're wondering. Shameless plug. All right, so what we do here is I've got some of that blocked in. Uh, this is the other cool feature about Mango Studio I like. Once I get some of these areas blocked in, I can hit G. I gotta hit it twice because the first time it goes to gradient. So G again, there's my fill tool. I must have missed something, Control Z. I'm sure we all know that one. Back to pen and see what I missed. I've got some, oh, right there. You gotta make sure all these lines are closed. Alright, I think that's good. Let's try it again. G twice to get the fill. And again, I was able to keep my hand on the keyboard the whole time. Which, you know, I'm talking here so it doesn't <clears throat> seem like I'm moving very fast, I'm sure. But, uh, as I really get to get to going on this stuff, the more I can keep my right hand on the keyboard, and I'm left-handed, obviously, and my left hand on the drawing tablet, the faster I can go. And the less I have to rely on coming over here and clicking something, the quicker I'm going to be able to go. So... That's kind of the uh, importance of that, why, I'm <clears throat> why I tell you shortcut commands when we talk about this stuff, or when I talk to you and you just listen on the other side, whatever. So, at any rate, there's uh, that. I always got to go in and kind of clean myself up. That's the only bad thing about the fill tool. And somebody did tell me that there's a setting that I need to adjust under my <clears throat> brush settings, but we'll get to that later. So if you, if you deal with that too and you get sick of cleaning up the lines, I guess you go in there and you adjust the, uh, what's it called, the raster, the the line, oh god, I wish I could remember. Essentially it's the way that it sees the lines and instead of giving a slight blur to the edge, uh, it, it makes it a more solid uh, brush, so it won't, it won't pick up the edges funny like that. It's the best way I can explain it without showing it to you. So. The rest of this, I would just sit there and keep adding line work. So now, another cool feature on uh, Mango Studio, hit R for rotate. 
I'll rotate that leg a little bit, hit space to move the screen where I want it. Uh, zoom, which is a funky little bracket key to the bottom right, and you can set those to whatever you want, by the way. Um, back to pen, P for pen. And then I'll just cross hatch a little bit. Now I'm feathering the lines, I'm hitting thick, and then thinning it out on the last one or two strokes. And what you want to do to get your style, because uh, this is mainly a style thing, it doesn't have to look the way that I'm feathering right there. You don't got to do it that way. I mean, there's just countless ways of coming up with uh, cool cross hatching and ink styles. You know, look at any comic books and you're going to see a ton of them. Um, I like the 90s stuff, and you know, it's probably why my stuff is going to look a little bit, you know, closer to that. But whatever, you know, there's there's some a lot of cool stuff out there now. Um, it's just when I really got into comics and thought they were awesome, so kind of, you know, that little bit of that era stuck with me. But yeah, it's just that little bit of feathering makes a big difference, you know. So I see a lot of guys will say, what kind of brush is that? What kind of brush is that? It's not the brush. This is a basic brush that comes with Manga Studio, and it's just learning how to use it. You know, just like if you were using a Crowquill or a brush, you know, you'd be amazed at some of the lines these, these really awesome uh, big-time pros get. With their, uh, you know, their basic basic tools. They're nothing uh, too extravagant. Um, I mean, a brush is pretty cool, but it's it's how well you get to being able to use it. And a croquil is really cool. It's just messy and time consuming, but once you get really good with it, it's you can't beat it. I mean, I I don't think I get as good of lines as I could get with a croquil, but um, I've I've only spent a few years on digital, so. I think for that short amount of time, um, I'm pretty happy with the results. You know, and that, and like how I'm doing this stuff here, if you're paying attention to that, obviously, um, I'm just kind of messing around and, and coming up with different lines. And, you know, the stuff I'll probably do a year from now will look somewhat different than this because I'll find uh, new ways to make my lines look interesting. Um, like when you see in comics a lot, it's like just coming up to the back of a thicker line, just adding these little... Uh, prods or pokes off the side and sometimes doing a little line through it like that I mean just little things to make it where the lines that much more interesting to look at is gonna help you um, you know make your your comic stand out and look cool and you know get you that that you know book sale that you're after so alright so and I gotta and a lot of times you'll see comic artists uh, you know do little stuff like this so they can remember where they're at it's easier if you put that X in there to see where your shadows are. And let me see if there's anything else I have to address when it comes to this. Uh, I feather the lines, I spot in some blacks like I'm doing there. Um, I look at the one leg for reference now that the, you know, the um, this one's done, I kind of look over at this one for reference. Uh, something that might look cooler is to put a heavier shadow. Since this leg's kind of bent back, we want to make it look like it's more in shadow than the leg up here. So I'll start drawing like this is a highlight on the back side of the calf. Uh, I'll put this all in shadow, but maybe a small little glare on the front of the uh, leg there. <clears throat> and I think I'll fill all that in. I think I'll fill in some of this some of this here because like I said I really want to make it look like it's in shadow so this is the part where I'm saying I'll add a little bit more than what was already there um, trying to picture where you know the bulk of the shadows would be and let me fill some of this in now the other good thing about digital and inking one of my favorite things actually is the fact that I can work on the fly like this right I go uh, G for paint bucket Fill that in, fill that in, fill that in, fill that in, and clean up my lines because I need to get in there and change that brush setting. Okay, so now I've got the, the bulk of this in there. Uh, I'll use that angle key, which I do not know the name of. It's the same one as the question mark, I think, and that should be the default. Okay, now that I zoom back, the leg looks a hair bit more in shadow, but not enough. I want this leg to really darken up so it'll it'll make that walking motion actually now I'm looking at, I think his legs are a funky size but I'll fix that later um, 
yeah, I want it to look like it's really coming out of the shadow. So what I'll do is just keep adding a little bit more to this. And I still got my lines I can add too, so I'm not gonna just totally block this out. But just when I do my lines, I'll I'll do those a little heavier too, and that should help us to push that form back. Let's see. I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. I think it'd be like I think I'm on like the third or fourth time I've ever been wrong at this point. Kidding, kidding. Okay, so if we do this. Uh, let's see, if I take spacebar for the hand, R for rotate, I always have to have my canvas uh, pointed a certain way for me to, to ink properly. Okay, so now I'm going to shade this leg, and I'm just going to do it a, a little bit heavier than the other. So I'm looking at that other one, make sure my lines are just a little bit stronger. So, I usually do at least one or two of the other direction, so it's got a little bit of cross hatching. You don't want to go too crazy with your cross hatching though, because it really takes away from, you know, good work. I, I see some guys that'll uh, try to cover up their work with with shading, and others use it just just well enough where it brings out that artwork and really, you know, makes it stand tall if you do too much of it like I would I'd be even safe to say that I've got a little too much going on here mainly too for this reason let me uh, rotate it and zoom back see if that's enough for what I was trying to go after yeah but what I was getting ready to say is you also got to keep in in mind size relation I mean that's a pretty small panel on the comic book page by the time it gets sized down you're gonna be looking at it from where we're at about right here maybe just a hair here closer about there max which you know I don't know what it looks like on your screen right now but it, it's all gonna get shrunk down dramatically so the fact that I'm in there that tight and doing that kind of work probably a slight waste of time there I'd be safe to say so uh, but sometimes it's fun and sometimes you want to really impress people with your work so you know you can get in there and doodle and show them what you got you know uh, let's see what else what else would help you with the inking process um, the other thing is just to when you are doing stuff to to doodle around and try different textures you're gonna need a whole arsenal of them so like right here you can see I just threw in some real basic lines I mean that's that's supposed to be a rock wall right there I know it doesn't look like that it's like a funky looking M or something but all I did is I know I'm gonna be the one going back to ink it and this is a pretty far uh, landscape shot so and, and rocks and textures are pretty darn easy so you just kind of get in there do some of this stuff you know vary up the lines some little crosshatch some some texturing you know with with uh, rocks and things like that you're just gonna kinda throw in like you know little I don't know how to explain it just little bits of texture and and like cracks you know just cracks in the wall and then as you spend there doing more time uh, with it it'll start to kinda flow it usually does anyways for me so I'll do a you know a few and they won't gel right and all of a sudden I'll be like oh really you know what I'm really starting to see is this and I'll run with it and I can usually come up with some decent looking rock textures so I would say and I think that comes from just doodling on paper not drawing anything significant uh, just practicing and I'll start you know doodling some rock textures or I'll draw some uh, some chrome effects or some anatomy you know my my sketchbooks are just full of random random stuff because you're gonna put it all together and you're gonna bring it into a thing called your style you know that's how you come up with your style and and you know what you think looks cool it's all from those little sketchbook practices so you know just sit there and I guess the other thing is sit there with a just an ink pen too um, sometimes that's that's kind of a nice little training exercise and freedom and to see what the pen can really do you know it's one thing to sketch it out and then come back to inking and sketch it out it gets daunting at times just grab the pen you know whether you're using uh, digital or, or traditional medias and just make all kinds of lines with it feather the lines cross hatch the lines uh, do heavy textures do light textures really see what what sticks and what looks cool to you and that's how you'll uh, again define your your style so 
you know, like as I'm sketching this, I don't know what this thing is, his, his uh, grass skirt or whatever, I wanted him to look kind of mean and tribal, but um, I'm thinking of how I would feather hair. So that's that's what I start looking at as I'm doing it, you know, it, it looks very similar to what uh, the texture of hair might be. So that's what pops into mind and that's what I start doing and then I just do it. I don't have to think about it a whole lot because uh, I've drawn hair psh, thousands of times now so if I if I have to think about that then you know I still need some practice drawing you know hair but I'm trying to say those textures coincide you know you can use that one for um, for a variety you know for a few different things actually uh, the same way that you would do hair works on different foliages um, trying to think what else I don't know. You just have to mix it up. Like, like there's actually some times when I'll do textures of what looks to be like hair, but I'll be doing it for um, um, for an underlying texture to something else. I do a lot of that in digital painting, where you know you can literally take a variety of textures and put them together and make a new texture or a really cool background or something like that. So yeah, just a little bit of lines uh, again not too heavy I kinda want a little bit crazy on the legs and you're not gonna see a lot of that so and this one oh one more cool thing and I'll let you guys get to your practice uh, Mango Studio you can also size the brush down with the bracket keys you can hold shift and it'll give you a nice clean line so really great for techie stuff and perspective and you can fly right through that you know like I'm these are probably gonna be a hair crooked but I'm not worried about it because by the time I shade them by the time I do everything I can usually clean that up a bit and you know it doesn't got to be perfect again you want to justify how much time you spend in certain portions of your, your uh, comic book page based on the time like I can't spend two hours in this little panel right here when I got a whole page to complete so, at any rate, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Here, I'll show off some of the other line work real quick. You can see all this artwork on uh, ramstudios1.deviantart. Be sure to like and subscribe so I can keep bringing you these videos. I really enjoy making them. And hopefully you can uh, watch the Blackstone book grow and, you know, get out there and you can be part of that. So, thanks very much for watching. Uh, have fun. Keep drawing.